Ever wanted to build your own World War II building from scratch? That's exactly what we will do in this video. Let's do it the right way, step by step, from scratch to masterpiece. For every project that I do, I always draw some kind of a blueprint. And this blueprint will be available on my Patreon page. It's free to join and you don't have to pay any money. It's free and I just want you to download it and follow along if you want to build it yourself. This building represents a Italian farm uh, near Lazio region, so it's close to Rome. And uh, it's for a diorama that uh, I will build uh, and you will see uh, later on on the next uh, video. So the first step is to basically take the blueprint and just trace down on a piece of XPS foam. And that will be the base of our building wall. After we trace down uh, everything, we're just going to basically cut the wall and we will also trace uh, the stairs and we will cut the stairs a little bit later. Um, this way, uh, basically, if you do it step by step and using the blueprint, you cannot miss it. And honestly, you can do uh, so uh, some, some variation to our blueprint. But uh, if you follow along, um, just cut everything like the stairs, uh, the window and the door frame. Also, you don't have to use a foam cutter. You can just do it with your uh, X-Acto knife or hobby knife. Um, after, the, after we cut uh, everything with our, um, our, our foam cutter, uh, that leaves some kind of a trace. So I'm just going to send everything to have a kind of a smooth finish. And that's uh, the, two, the first two pieces uh, that we will build now. It's going to be time to build the, um, the, the next wall. So it's basically a two piece wall uh, that, will, uh, that will do some kind of um, a 90 degrees uh, angle. And I will use the same method. So basically I'm just going to trace down everything. So I'm just going to assemble uh, the stairs uh, to our main uh, building. And I'm just using tacky glue. Uh, I'm using tacky glue for the only reason that uh, it's less watery than PVA glue. So it's going to dry a lot uh, quicker than uh, regular PVA glue. But if you have just uh, PVA glue, you can, you can use it. Uh, it's only going to take a little bit more uh, of a dry time, uh, drying time. So uh, to make sure that it's not going to move, I'm just going to add some pin to our, our two buildings. Now it's time to assemble the next uh, two wall pieces. Uh, like I said, it's a 90 degree uh, angle and that's the other side of our main building. Now it's time to draw some, uh, some brick or some stone wall. Uh, basically, I'm just gonna do it uh, by hand because I'm used to it. But uh, you can find a pattern on the internet if you want to and you can just download it and trace it uh, the same way you did uh, with the building. But um, honestly, um, after we draw um, basically our stone uh, wall, uh, we're just going to cut it after that or trace it with a, um, with a regular pen. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, you can already cut it uh, instead of tracing it first, but uh, that's the, for me, it's the easiest way. So I'm just gonna basically uh, draw all my rocks uh, and I will, like I said, I'm using a, a lead pen. Uh, I don't know if it's the right term, but uh, I'm just gonna basically uh, increase uh, all the rock formation on our wall. This way it's gonna give you uh, textures and also uh, it's gonna defin uh, make definition to all your uh, your uh, stone wall. And like I said, you can use a, a lead pen or you can use your, uh, your hobby knife to cut it. And after that, 
use a regular pen to just basically trace everything. Uh, on the smaller part of the building, I'm just going to remove chunks of, uh, of wall and bricks because I'm looking for a really, really, really old building that uh, kind of, uh, I would say, half uh, destroyed uh, by not only by the war, but by the time. So it's, uh, I would say, 19th century building. So I'm just going to remove a chunk of uh, stone wall and a lot of different chunk uh, all over the place to make sure that uh, it's going to look uh, really aged, really old. And that's the look that I'm uh, looking for. This diorama uh, will be uh, located in the rural region of Rome. So that's why we have uh, some kind of a, a really old uh, Italian farm. So I'm just gonna work on the uh, wood beam. I'm using piece of balsa wood. And also I'm just gonna use a, um, a, a wire brush to uh, mimic uh, the, uh, the wood grain. So it's uh, super easy, but it's a nice uh, add-on to, uh, to your building. I'm just gonna do a, a light sanding of, uh, of our wall uh, before we apply the tile grout. A, I'm using a pre-mixed tile grout, but you can use uh, a, uh, a tile grout that you can mix uh, yourself with water. But uh, since I don't use it uh, all the time, it's only for kind of a stucco texture. And um, that's why I'm using a small pot. I'm just basically basically stippling with uh, some kind of a foam. Uh, in this case, it's a foam brush. Um, but you can use uh, a sponge or in this case, uh, it's a kind of a sponge with, uh, with kind of a stick. So I don't know where I find this, but uh, probably at uh, a dollar store or any uh, hobby store or something like that. Um, basically, the the way of doing it is you're basically just apply in a, some kind of a tin layer uh, all around uh, the place you want to have some uh, some stucco texture. And after that, uh, when you apply it in a really thin layers, you're uh, basically just doing with foam. If you don't have tile grout in your country or whatever, you can use a uh, polyphyla. So basically it's a wall filler. Uh, you can buy it at uh, any um, any home, uh, home hardware store or for example, Home Depot or Lowe's or Canadian Tire or whatever it is. And it's another way to mimic stucco texture. So basically I'm using a mix. Um, sometimes I use tile grout, sometimes I'm using uh, the uh, polyphyla uh, wall filler depending honestly the result it's kind of the same the only difference is uh, the tile grout it's kind of a I would say a more rough texture so that's why uh, sometimes I use tile grout after you apply your stucco texture just uh, basically I'm doing a, a light sand so the base color uh, I will basically use a primer uh, it's a black primer from AK Interactive and I will apply this primer all over the place. Uh, in this case, I'm using my airbrush because it's kind of the easiest way to apply primer. Uh, but uh, you will see a little bit later, you can do it. If you don't have an airbrush, uh, it doesn't really matter at all to build this uh, this um, this building because you don't really need it. So I'm just basically using a sponge. So instead of doing um uh, applying primer with my hairbrush i'm just gonna using a sponge and i'm basically painting with a sponge so this way you're gonna apply the base color so in this case it's dark gray uh, instead of black uh, and basically you can use it uh, and do it with the sponge or you can even use a, a paintbrush it doesn't really matter the first uh layer will be uh camo uh, German camo beige uh, I will just basically focus on the uh, the rock formation for uh, our stone wall uh, I'm basically going to paint uh, all of our stone uh, the same color of uh, camo beige uh, that's the I would say the base color for all of our uh, our rock wall 
Like I said earlier, uh, this uh, building will be part of a diorama and I will also build a German self-propelled howitzer, the Wespe, uh, that uh, are based on the Italian front. So uh, that's the uh, diorama that uh, I will build. So just apply a camo beige uh, layer on all of our brick wall. And now, um, like I said, if you don't have an airbrush, I'm just going to do some kind of a light dust, a pre-weathering um, dust that we do on, uh, on model armor normally. Um, but we're just going to basically do a kind of a pre-dusting and uh, paint, uh, doing all over um, all the, the different walls and all the buildings. From now on, you don't need an airbrush at all. So I'm just gonna basically doing uh, what we call a uh, stippling method uh, by uh, using a sponge. So basically uh, the first layer will be graphite. Um, and the way of doing it is you just basically plunge your, uh, your sponge into, uh, into the, the, um, the paint and you just dimp uh, a little bit on a piece of a uh, scup towel or something like that to remove as much paint uh, as possible depending on the look you are looking for but it's kind of the same thing as uh, when you do dry brush you're basically removing uh, as much paint as possible just to uh, left with a really uh, thin layer just to highlight everything but with the stippling method it's a uh, a super easy way to paint and add some more texture to any of your build. It's a super, uh, super easy method and you can use it all the time when you build a building. In this case, it's a super old building. So that's why I'm using uh, different colors uh, of, uh, of paint to, uh, to apply with the, the stippling method. It's super easy and honestly, it's the best way to have uh, some, some layer and some depth of color to uh, any of your building. You can use the stippling method also when you want to, uh, to weather uh, any of your vehicle. But the, in this case, you have to be gentle with the, the amount of paint you have on your sponge. You basically damp on uh, a piece of a scup towel uh, as much paint as possible. This way you're left with uh, just a, a little uh, thin layers. Um, I'm just gonna basically paint the uh, the wood structure of our building. I'm using dark wood by Army Painter. The only reason why is I have this paint, so I just want to uh, basically use it instead of throwing uh, all the garbage. But you can use like a kind of a dark brown or or German uh, black brown if you have uh, some uh, that kind of color. It's only uh, basically a base color to, uh, to your wood uh, structure. I'm also using a wash by uh, Game Workshop. Uh, it's, the, um, it's, it's pretty rare that I'm using that. I will use also the Null Oil. That's probably the best uh, wash uh, on the market. If you want to buy just only one uh, wash, pre-made wash, just buy the Null Oil. That's the best thing you can figure it out on the market. It's unbelievable. So you're just continuing uh, by applying the earth shade wash to uh, all around your building. Just uh, avoid the uh, stone wall. Um, basically, we're gonna do uh, some different uh, different treatment a little bit later. But on the stucco texture, uh, just add uh, your wash. For the brickwork or the stonework, uh, I'm just going to add some different layers of paint. Uh, I'm using earth tone, so <clears throat> it could be brown, beige, or kind of a light brown. And I'm just going to basically paint uh, all the rock formation. Now I'm, I'm going to use uh, light dust by, uh, by Vallejo. It's in the Panzer Aces uh, series. And I will do uh, some kind of a pre-dusting all over uh, our main building. After that, we're just going to do a light sanding. I'm using a 3000 grit sandpaper from Tamiya. 
and uh, we're also going to do some kind of a dry brush. I'm using uh, some specific dry brush paint uh, from Amomeg, but you can use any, uh, I would say, kind of a creamy color uh, or kind of a, I would say, light sand color or something like that. It's only to basically focus on the raised area of the building. And the next step is to basically uh, apply a wash. Um, I'm using Vallejo Dark Grey uh, to apply the wash on uh, basically uh, all over the place for the building. Now it's time to use some pigments. Uh, I don't know if you ever used pigments before, but uh, in this case, I'm looking for kind of a, a dusty look uh, on, uh, on my building since it's gonna be uh, in the rural area and it's really dusty. So I'm using uh, a mix of uh, AK Interactive uh, pigments and you're basically just gonna apply it all over the place. Now it's time to basically uh, protect your work that you did so far. So I'm using Satin Varnish by Vallejo again. I'm using the spray can, but uh, you can use a, a kind of a bottle that you can apply with your, uh, with your airbrush. Now we can start building our doors uh, from scratch. So basically I'm just using uh, balsa wood. I just got uh, two pieces, the exact, the exact size of the door that I'm looking for. I'm just gonna do a kind of a light sanding uh, to uh, the two pieces to just remove uh, the excess uh, cutting, uh, cutting wood that we have. And I'm just gonna basically cut two strips uh, of uh, balsa wood and for the bigger door, so the one on the smaller building, uh, I'm basically just uh, doing a frame uh, all around our door. So it's uh, the look that I'm uh, basically looking for. And um, you will see, basically you don't have to do the exact same thing. So you can build the, the kind of door you are looking for. But uh, when I saw um, the different um, different pictures of the area, uh, those uh, that's the the exact door that uh, all the, the the farm building had at that time. So I'm also going to use my wire brush again to mimic the wood uh, texture, the same thing that we did on our our beam, and I'm just going to apply. It's kind of a I would say a door hinges. Uh, that uh, will uh, basically separate uh, the two uh, the two parts of the doors. I'm just gonna also remove uh, chunks of uh, of uh, the the I would say the um, the the piece of the door uh, to make it a little bit more uh, old and really uh, really really um, destroyed. For the second door, I just basically scratch built a, a uh, metal handle and uh, we will basically uh, apply it on the, uh, on the wall. Now it's time to start the weathering uh, of this building. So I'm just going to use uh, what we call the streaking method um, or you can use some, uh, some what we call uh, dot filters or something like that doesn't really matter but uh, by using the streaking method uh, it's basically a random uh, piece of weathering that you uh, you will have uh, all over your wall so it's not going to be uh, uh, basically a straight uh, a straight line or something like that so just basically uh, doing uh, doing a streaking easily so the first layer that uh, we will do on both of our doors is uh, applying a dark gray wash or you can use black it doesn't really matter so i'm just going to apply a wash uh, on our our two doors hey guys i'm starting to lose my voice because uh normally i don't do a video that long and the um the, the speech that i have to to do is uh is really long so excuse me if i lose my voice a little bit um I'm just going to apply kind of a mix of different uh, kind of paint uh, on the doors. Uh, basically, it's up to you, but just basically go with a kind of a light gray, a, a white gray, some kind of a, I would say, sandy color also. 
and um, in this step uh, we only gonna do some dry brush um, again I'm using some uh, specific uh, paintbrush for dry brush for dry brushing but uh, you don't have to you can use regular uh, paintbrush Now it's time to work on the metal handle. I'm using the same pattern that uh, I normally do by using a dark crust color. Uh, again, by Vallejo, it's, uh, it's in the Panzer Aces uh, series. S uh, following by a light rust uh, color. And the last step is to apply a, uh, a wash, a rust wash again by Vallejo. I know that AK Interactive uh, do that or if you have uh, some kind of a uh, orange paint or uh, something like that you can mimic rust tone also. <clears throat> now I'm just gonna apply some uh, dust and their deposit so it's a light dust. I'm using again the streaking method because for me it's kind of uh, the easiest way uh, to, uh, to apply some dust all over our building. Uh, it's uh, it's a nice way also to not uh, add too much because by doing the streaking so basically you're removing the excess uh, paint that you apply so guys it's a really fun build and I just hope you will do it and just send me a picture of uh, what we uh, what you did uh, with this building because for example, I will show you my uh, way of doing it uh, in this video, but there's so many ways you can do it. So now it's time to basically do the assembly of, uh, of our building. So we're gonna assemble uh, the, uh, the two parts uh, of our building. And uh, we're also gonna uh, uh, basically assemble the two, uh, the two doors uh, of our building. Now we're gonna work on the stair uh, railing. So I'm looking with uh, a really uh, banged up uh, uh, railing uh, that will be uh, applied uh, all over our staircase. Basically, if you're using the blueprint, you also have the drawing that I did uh, on where to put your uh, your railing. So it's kind of a super easy. The I would say the the part that was uh, not so easy is to basically glue all the small pieces together because it's basically you you need time use use some uh, some wood glue or some uh, some um, super glue it's going to be a lot easier but uh, it was kind of a pain in the ass to uh, basically uh, stick all those uh, pieces together now I'm just basically going to use uh, some kind of a a brown so uh, a, just a regular brown color that will be our base uh, our base paint for uh, for our railings if you make it so far just leave me a comment I just want to know how many people will stick until the end and I just want to basically congratulate you because like I said it's a longer video than usual but uh, I just want to make sure that you understand that you can build your own uh, super nice building from scratch so now it's only time to uh, basically apply the railing and basically gluing uh, glue it uh, in place I'm just basically using also uh, kind of a wash it's a, a dark brown wash uh, from Vallejo again and that will be our our final uh, final product that we apply some uh, sienna uh, light sienna pigments uh, from Vallejo again just to again have uh, the dusty look that we are looking for guys i'm really happy you stick until the end just leave me comments uh from the one that you uh you stay until the end of this video it's a 25 minutes video so normally i don't do uh some kind of uh, super long video like that but i just want to show you that you can build 
your own building from scratch and it's super easy. So see you in the next video guys.